Hello, my name is Free Happy Dolphin, and I'm going to give you thoughts and review on Hellcar, the game that we covered in 100 Million Dive series, and now with Verdict series putting it on our leaderboard. Evaluation criteria can be found in community posts through the link in the description down below, and now let's dive in. First category short term engagement. This game is easy to get and has fun in it. Similarities to Slay the Spire bring some nice vibes. You could argue that storyline and characters are not super developed, but the main issue in this category I find to be not this one. What's frustrating the most are those minutes, and I think it's tens of minutes in the run, but you just have to play, but nothing really changes because of it. In a lot of floors you finish the main challenge, for example killing the main boss or big damage dealers, and you can easily survive those low caliber enemies. And you can not only survive, but killing them is a question of time and cycling through your deck rather than any challenge. This time adds up and once the game becomes a work it's no longer fun. So for this one I take full star and for storyline a half a star off which leaves us with 3.5 out of 5 in this category. The next is replayability and complexity. Here again the same work aspect from the last category is probably the biggest issue and it worsens while applied to multiple runs. Other components look quite fine. Some levels can challenge you, levels are sort of generated with different opponents and alternating bosses there is a torment system, really nice way of making difficulty levels not just plain easy or hard. Endless and multiplayer modes provide variety for experienced players and there are tools to build your deck, not only get what game suggests. Since you unlock new things after each run, you can expect new stuff all the time. On Twitch, 100 minute dive stream, some experienced players let me know that they are able to see undiscovered things even after long hours in the game and going until 80 floors on endless mode. I wonder however how many literally hours of work I described before they do on a run like this. So because of the same problem in the long term gameplay as well, we end up with 4 out of 5. Visuals and audio. Obviously this game falls into the minimalistic graphics approach, which is not bad overall, but the score will be capped because of some great examples of graphics on our leaderboard. But it's not minimalistic graphics that take points away from this category. Sometimes the game can be simply not clear enough, for example, since some enemies won't face you but stand with side or back to the player's view, it's not always clear what type of creature it is. And it's not because monster looks so different from other perspective. Sometimes it can seem to look like a few types of monsters. So it results in clicking on multiple enemies before fight to figure out what are they. Good looks can easily remove this problem of another extra work for a player. It's worth mentioning that we are really no cinematic storylines to compete with other titles as well. Anyway, I was satisfied with sound and everything related, so then it sums up to 3.5 out of 5 stars. Handling and user interface. Interface is quite clear by itself, a lot of things seems to be borrowed from well crafted deck building games, which is fine. However, few improvements, like still improving single player handling of free players hands at the same time giving more control or just being able to easily access your companions decks are things to improve on. Some clear breakdown of card rarities and other in-game help apart from simple card wiki would also be very welcome. 4 out of 5. And finally uniqueness and wow factor. This game does have its own resources and interesting slice and close or far range mechanics, but if compared to other similar titles, it does not really bring anything revolutionary to the genre. You can be happy with memorable moments and emotional impact because of variety in runs overall, but for me this happiness somehow was always fighting with frustration because of overload in card options for a single player hands, needless floor clears when there is no challenge left, and super long runs overall. And as you can predict, the most similar game to this Slay the Spire is simply ahead in possibly all categories. It's hard to define true score here, but it seems to be average in all components of this category, so I will just leave half a star for each, which sums up to 2.5 out of 5.
five stars. Cannot really point out any additional negative components, so that will be just a zero negative stars. And this sums to 3.5 stars. Not a bad rating for sure, but not making it to our current top 5 of the leaderboard and taking 7th spot overall. For full leaderboard, check me on Instagram, X, or just community post on YouTube. And thank you for watching. This was Free Happy Dolphin. See you next time.